Hey guys! Today I'm going to show you how I make my G-code cutting files for my CNC machine. This will be a great tutorial for if you're just starting out with CNC machining or if you're just curious. Thanks for watching! So here we are in Carbide Create. This is the free program that comes with your Shapoko machine, but it's also available to download for free for any user. Uh, so you can use this if you have a different machine. Here is our stock image, and we're going to go and change the stock size. This is the size of your board, and you, changed it, you change it based on the width and the height. So I'm going to change my width here to 14 inches. And I'm going to change the height of my board to 5.5 inches. And then here I'm going to look. My stock thickness is 0.75, so that's correct already. And I'm going to change my toolpath 0 to the center of my board. This just helps it to be a little bit more accurate. For materials, I'm looking at soft wood, that is correct for what I'm using for pine. It is a Shapoko XL, and the rest of this looks alright. Okay, now here I'm just going to move this around a little bit just to get into a position that's easiest for me to see it. I personally like to see the whole thing while I'm editing here. Alright, that looks pretty good. I can see the whole board, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to create my first image here, a rectangle. And I'm going to get this about to the size I want. And then I'm going to go and use the resize function over here just to be a little bit more precise once I've got it close to where I want. Okay, that looks pretty good as far as where I want that to be. Now it's close to being centered, but I want it to be exactly centered in the middle of my board. So I'm going to choose a line to stock. That's super important, aligning it to your board. And then I'm going to use the align center feature. And now it's exactly in the middle where I want it to be. Alright, so that's going to be our border here. So that will all be the raised border of this home sign. And now that we've got our raised border set here, we can go ahead and do our text for this sign. So I'm going to go over here to the text feature, and I'm going to type in the text that I want, which in this case is the home letters. And then you can change your font. There are tons of fonts available. I have a particular favorite that I like for these home signs, so I'm going to use that. Now I've got my letters here, but I need to resize them. You can play around a little bit with sizing your letters, see exactly how you want. For certain signs you may want them to be larger or smaller, just depending on what you're trying to make. In this case, I want them to be fairly large since these are kind of the focal piece of this sign. And I'm going to get them approximately centered here about to where I want them. And look, maybe it make a few more adjustments here. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Looks good. I'm going to center these again as well. Just want to keep everything centered. So it looks nice and even. Okay, now I have my letters. Now the next part of this seems kind of silly, but it's important. Um, so you're going to need to actually make a copy of all of the letters, or well, of your whole design. So I'm using a Mac, so I'm going to choose Command C, but if you're on a PC, you can just right click here. There we go. And I'm moving the copy out of the way. I'm actually going to delete my original now. And this step is important for when you're making your toolpath here. So make sure you don't skip this. Now I'm going to select everything, move it back up here. And then I'm going to group 
my selection, this groups my border with my letters so that they move together. And now I'm going to center the whole thing. So I'm going to choose align to stock again and align the full center. And there we go, everything's exactly centered now. And that is looking pretty good. So my next step, I've got what I want it to look like. I need to go to my toolpath. So the toolpath is what you tell the machine to cut, where to cut, basically. So you have some options over here. For this particular one, you're going to use contour. Um, but there's other options for if you're just trying to do an engraving or for different styles of cuts. You have your options, but for this one, I am going to do contour because I'm going to be pocket cutting. So here up here at the top is where you choose what bit you're putting in your router. So right now it's set to a 1 8 inch end mill, which is what I'm going to be using for this. But just so that you can see your options, you might not, you're not always going to use a 1 8 inch. You might use other ones. So you have options there. I just prefer the 1 8 inch for this. And these presets, I usually don't change very much. You can change them, but I usually just keep them for what it is. I might change the spindle speed, but that's about it. Okay, my start depth, that's the uh, top of my board, the stock top, so that's where I want that to be. You can just click use stock top to reset that if you need to. And the depth of my cut, I'm going to leave at 0.2 inches. I don't want to choose use stock bottom here because that would cut all the way to the bottom of my board and that's not what I'm doing. So here for the offset, you can choose no offset this inside, outside, or what we're going to use is the pocket. And see, so you see the blue lines there are showing that that is what is going to be cut out, is the blue areas here, and then what will be left is the areas that are there in white. So this has made our toolpath, and that's looking pretty good, that's exactly what I want, hour and 15 minute cut time. Okay, and then when I come down here, I'm going to make sure that my material is set correctly. I am using pine, but you could use other materials with your Shapeoko machine, but here I'm using pine. Now I'm going to check out the simulation just to get a better idea of what it's going to look like. And I can move this around a little bit just to get different views from different angles to make sure that it's come out just the way that I want it to look. And that's looking pretty good about how I want that to look. You have different options here. You can show the actual toolpath where it's going to go. And showing the rapid shows the rapid movements that the machine makes, but I don't like to look at those because I think it looks pretty this way. And that looks pretty good. Now my next step, I need to save the code. And this is the code that you're actually going to send to the machine to tell it where to cut. So I'm going to name that. I'm going to save it in my G codes folder. And we're going to be good to go there. Okay, so I've got my sign. Everything is cut how, or is ready to go how I want it to go. And now all I need to do is get it set to go and set to cut. And we should be good to go. Hey again! Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. Leave comments and questions down below and make sure you like and share this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more crafting tips and tricks. See you soon!